We are officially in the thick of holiday season. We have finished Thanksgiving, and for a lot of us, it is now Christmas time. We have been preparing our homes, focusing on decorations and traditions. Maybe we're in the mindset with Black Friday of spending, getting gifts. And with all that going on, we tend to lose focus of what really matters, which is why I wanted to get this video out now. I want this video to be a reminder of Advent that Jesus came down from heaven to earth for us and not just remembering that, but really preparing our homes, both our internal home and our physical home to be Christ-centered. We need to create a renewed home, both internally and physically, that is centered on Christ alone. And then we need to work on managing our home so we keep that, so that we have that internal perspective always in the back of our minds, that everything that we do, whether we choose to buy something for our home or do something in our home or our everyday lives, that we have our eternal home in mind. We are going to talk about ways both internally and physically that we can have that Christ-centered home, that we can truly put aside our wants and our desires and everything of this earth so that everything internally and physically around us and in us can be focused on Christ. So come along with me as we do some homemaking, organize the home, and really dive deep into creating a Christ-centered home, both internally and physically. If you have already been a subscriber or watching my videos, you know that I have a Homemaker's Helping Hand Planner where you can organize many parts of your day, whether that would be your cleaning, your meal planning, your day-to-day -day activities, weekly activities, whatever it may be. I have many different templates and pages for you so that you can really try to optimize and be efficient with your homemaking. This is a free download. It always will be. If you are someone who has previously downloaded this already, you have a new email with the updated version. So make sure that you check that. Check the spam folder if you don't see it. Always reach out to me and email me if things aren't working or if the downloads aren't working. And if you haven't downloaded this planner already, I will have the link to the blog post where I go into more depth about what we have talked about in this video, which also includes the link that you can download this planner at. I laminated the front and back cover and use a binder spine that opens and shuts. That way I can remove or add any pages that I want or don't want. I'm just removing the 2023 calendar pages and adding in the 2024 calendar pages along with some other templates that I wasn't using before but want to try. With managing my home, personally, I have been using a strict schedule, but I am wanting to try more of an AM PM routine where I just have specific things that I want to get done, but not necessarily at a specific time. If you want more in-depth information about planning your home, Christian homemaking in general, I will leave my Christian Homemaking 101 blog post down below that gives more in-depth details to this planner and planning your day specifically with the different routines and schedules and templates. I will have that linked down below. With all that being said, we are going to jump into five steps that you can take to really make your home both internally and physically Christ-centered. Before we jump into those five steps, we really have to have an examination of home and intent. So before you can make any real changes to managing your home well, you must first pause and have an examination of intent or an examination of why. What is your why behind caring for and managing your home? There are a few questions I want you to ask yourself before we get started. Number one, what is most important about my home? Not in, but about. What is most important about my home? The next question I want you to ask yourself is, is the design and usage of my home focused on getting God's approval or worldly approval? In other words, is your home centered around decoration, around things that you're making idols of, that you're putting in front of your relationship with God that is taking your first priority? Is your home being decorated and cared for just so you can share it online? So it can be Pinterest or social media worthy. Really think about those things. Is the usage and design of your home focused on getting God's approval or worldly approval? The last question I want you to ask yourself is this. On a scale of one to 10, how well do you care for your home? That means keeping it clean, organized, appliances and belongings cared for, that they're well kept, making things that you have last, caring for them, tending to them, fixing up things that are broken versus buying new. On a scale of one to 10, how well do you, specifically you, care for your home? In order to prepare for our eternal home, we must prepare our physical home. 
our home, no matter whether it be an apartment, a duplex, a condo, a temporary space we're living, whether that's with someone, we have roommates, whether you have a big giant mansion you're caring for or a small 700 square foot house, that space God has provided you with. It is a blessing. Let me repeat that. It is a blessing. So whether your home needs so many renovations, it is too small for you and your family, it's just a temporary solution, it is still a blessing. It is a space that God wants you in right now. In order to have a truly Christ-centered home in a well-managed home, Christian home, we must first lay down our desire and our quote-unquote dream to have this perfect home, to have our dream home, the home that God has provided each of us with at this current time may not always be ideal, but it is given to us to be a good steward of. Everything we are given, God, it's his, it's his, and we are called to be a good steward of it. And if you are caught up with always planning and pinning and dreaming of a new home, you, number one, won't be able to care for the one that you have as God intends you to do. Number two, will lose thankfulness for what God has blessed you with. And number three, it will cause you to fall into the sin of discontentment and greed. When you have the mindset that everything you have belongs to God, you are able to see things in a whole new light. Nothing, I repeat, nothing that we have can be taken up to heaven with us. So why do we fixate on trying to have everything that we desire? Instead of thinking about what we could have, let's think about what God wants us to do with the blessings he has given us. How can we use our home, our current blessing, to bless others? In the previous clip, I was trying to write down some of the main things that I wanted to get done in the morning, the afternoon, and the evening, and I really want to try to implement this so I make sure that everything in my home is able to get done, that I'm able to manage things well without getting too overwhelmed. Now, as you can see, if you watched a previous video of mine, this space in particular gets just piled with junk, piled with trash and letters and mail and all of the things, but I have started the 30 day decluttering challenge. This is part of the planner. Again, if you already downloaded it, this wasn't a page initially in it, but it should be in the new download that you were emailed. I've started this and I want to keep it going. I want to declutter the spaces as I was trying to find places to store things, I thought, oh my gosh, Kelsey, just throw it away. You have these dried flowers that, you know, you have too many of, and now it's just becoming clutter. <laughs> so throw it away, throw it away, organize declutter, just keep the essentials. What I am doing is I brought up a tote with a lot of my kids' toys. We got rid of a ton of toys. I have found that I get overwhelmed with too many things, too many things in the living room, the kitchen, the dining room. And so I want to keep it essentially to the essentials. And so what I did was I brought up this tote and I have these baskets. They were from Target. I don't support Target, um, honestly, but I mean, if you do, you can buy them there, but I'm not promoting that. And pretty much if things can fit in these baskets, then these baskets can fit in totes and the baskets can also fit in the two They're pretty much just giant old lunch baskets, vintage lunch baskets. And I have two three of them in my living room, especially if you watched my other videos, you, I've kind of already talked about this and you may have noticed them, but I essentially take the white baskets that are organized with a specific type of toy and I place those into the big vintage cute baskets. This might be a waste of space. I realize that, but I like to still keep things organized and it's easy for my kids to do. They know, oh, this is the car tote. This is the transformer tote. This is the magnet tote. Um, and they can just put it in that basket and then I can store the baskets away and it looks very nice and neat. But essentially what I have done is if things don't fit in those three baskets upstairs, then they can't stay. Then they have to go downstairs. So I place them in this tote and I get them down. We're also preparing, you know, for more Christmas gifts. And although my husband and I are trying to do something a little bit different for Christmas, I know that, you know, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas will still get the toys. So I want to make space for that as well. All right, now to jump into the steps to take to have a Christ-centered and well-managed home. Number one, remove all things in your home causing you to sin. Look around, go around your house and remove anything or hide anything that is causing you to sin. And when I say hide, I mean, ask somebody that, you know, is old enough, is appropriate to hide or store the item from you to keep you accountable. And I am meaning hide devices or the remote. Don't hide 
truly simple things that you just need to get rid of in general. So here are some examples. Maybe you have posters, pictures, images that have jokes on them that are inappropriate, sayings that are inappropriate, have bad language, are you know racist or discriminatory, anything like that. Maybe you have pictures, posters that have scantily dressed people, people that are dressed inappropriate, whether those be girls or boys. Maybe you have celebrities hanging on your walls or in your room, in picture frames, anyone or anything that you are making an idol, get rid of. Maybe you are a big you know, fan of a certain celebrity and you have their picture hanging up on the wall. Really think about, do you care about this person more than you do God? Do you have a stronger relationship and know more about that person, that celebrity, than you do about God? Then you are making them an idol. A lot of times we don't even realize that we are making someone or something an idol. But if this person or people or thing are your priority, and you spend more time looking, finding information about, watching videos on anybody or anything over God, over your time with God, that is an idol. You need to get rid of that. Other things that maybe you need to remove or hide are computers and any type of technology that is causing you to sin. If you are struggling with sexual sins and the technology is causing you to sin, definitely ask for help. Definitely get an accountability partner. There are apps you can use, Accountable to You, Covenant Eyes, that can help you to fight the sin, to overcome the sin. Do not be afraid to reach out to others because so many, and I mean so many people have struggled with this and continue to struggle with this. Reach out to me if you want to. My email is in the description box below. Reach out to someone. You can get help. You can overcome it. So whether it's apps on your phone or anything specific with the technology that's causing you to sin, maybe it's causing you to be lustful, materialistic, idolaters, maybe it's news channels or sources that are causing you to lose faith and trust in God, any apps that are causing you to be distracted, to scroll, waste time, anything that is keeping you from caring for your home and hurting your relationship with God, you need to get rid of. No technology is going to be a big one, a very convicting one for a majority of us. I know it is for me. So no, you are not alone, but we must not become even more addicted to our phones, to our tablets, to our computers, whatever it may be. We need to have a break from technology. If you are struggling and you just need to delete your app, not necessarily your profile, but your app, definitely go ahead and do that. I actually have a future video coming up. I'm really excited about on whether or not Christians should have social media. So stay tuned for that. Going on to number two, that is simplifying your home to the essentials. So after you have removed anything and everything that is causing you to sin, go through your home. This does not have to be a one-time thing. You don't have to spend hours doing it. Try my 30-day decluttering challenge. One time a day for 30 days, organize and declutter a small space. Keyword, small space. This could be a cabinet, a cupboard, drawer, closet, room, a tote. However small you need it to be, as long as you can be successful. Being a good steward of what God gives you could also mean donating, giving to someone who needs it. So don't hoard things. Don't keep it all for yourself. If you're not using it, truly just give it. Give it as a donation. Give it to God. I am making some strawberry turnovers or hand pies, whatever you call them. For the first time, I had an extra pie crust in my fridge. I made pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving and my normal pie recipe, which I did make and share, is in my apple pie video. I will link that down below. It is the best crust ever. The recipe includes a top and a bottom, but for pumpkin pie, I just needed the bottom, so I had an extra crust. I would definitely do some things different with this, but essentially what I'm doing is adding some frozen strawberries. You can use fresh with a little bit of water, one tablespoon of cornstarch, one cup of sugar, and I'm just letting that boil, soften, trying to break up some of those strawberries. I just roll out the pie crust into little discs and then fill them. Next time I make these, I'm going to make the discs bigger so that I can add more of the filling. I did overfill them, so I had to take some out. But what I am doing is just putting in the filling and I'm going to fold over one side, not yet to the other side because I'm going to try and pinch it down and then fold that side over top of the first fold. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you can see what I am doing. Essentially don't fold the first half over all the way to the edge, fold it slightly before the edge so you can fold the other edge over top to add an extra barrier to keep the filling in. I then just place some oil over top. You can do an egg wash, but I was running out of eggs because of winter time and our chickens are laying less. I put three ventilation holes in and baked these at 400 degrees for 25 minutes. 
back to our five steps. Step number three is fill out and review your homemaking action plan. You might have already done this if you downloaded the planner initially, but if you haven't done it, go ahead and do it or review it. The purpose of this page is to help you determine your priorities in homemaking. So with this page, you are going to be writing down all of the things you are in charge of, all of the things you do in your day, in your week, and then really determine whether or not you want to keep doing them. Are these things that you're doing, are they tasks that are needed? Are they distractions that you can get rid of? It really helps you to outline what you want to actually get done during your day in your week. This also has a spot for scripture verses that when you are having a hard day or you need a verse to inspire you or encourage you, you have those already written out. You can go back, look at it, and then look up the scripture verses. It also has a spot for prayer intentions and skills growth. It is a page for planning and a page for preparing your heart for encouragement, scripture, and doing the work of God. Let's jump to number four, put it to prayer. Prayer should obviously be at the top. This should be done with your Bible study, your devotions, however you start your morning with God. But this specific number four, put it to prayer, is really asking God specifically to help you in your homemaking. So this is not to take over prayer in your normal communication with God to build that relationship. This is a specific prayer for homemaking, helping you so that you have the strength, the energy, the encouragement, the motivation to get everything that you need done for you to be able to set aside sin, to overcome your sins, to remove anything from your life, from your home that is not Christ-centered. Put that to prayer every single day. Everything that you want to do, everything you planned for on those pages, the 30-day challenge, all of the things put it to prayer. Last but not least, number five, organize. This kind of encompasses everything that you already went through one through four. This is you putting yourself into action, doing the work. You are going to organize. You're going to organize your priorities, your schedule, your routine, your home, whether you are already well off in the organization department and you can kind of just maintain your home or whether you have to take months and try and get back to square one so that you can continue to be organized and keep up with the home. You know, either way, this is you putting yourself into action, whether this is organizing in a small way or a big way. This is you getting going, doing the things, truly living out Christ in your home and in your heart, actually making the changes. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kelsey, and I make biblically encouraging videos on the vocation of homemaking.